Welcome, Berkey Academy viewers. Another person had a question about how to derive part of my utility theory handout. So here's my utility theory handout. Previously, I have gone through some other parts by hand. How would you solve this? A uh, viewer wanted me to go through the Hicksian or compensated demand functions. How is it that if you're given a particular utility function, such as x to the point 3 times y to the point 7, a Cobb-Douglas utility function, how do you derive these compensated Hicksian demands? The basic idea, of course, what we want to do is to minimize the amount of money, the budget. And here's the budget equation, price of x times x plus price of y times y. We want to minimize the amount of money it takes to get a person a certain level of utility, a given level of utility, 10 utils or 100 utils. So this viewer wants me to go through by hand, how do you derive these compensated demand functions? And I'm happy to do so. And if anybody has any other requests to see something done kind of the long way by hand, I'm happy to do so. So just send me a message. What we want to do is minimize the budget, and I'll just go ahead and write the uh, budget line equation here. The price of x times the amount of x plus the price of y times the amount of y's. And we want to minimize such that, or subject to the constraint, that x to the point 3 times y to the point 7 is equal to some fixed level of utility, u bar or u naught. So remember, these are 0.3 and 0.7 here. So there are a couple of ways you could go about this. One is to set up a constrained maximization problem using a Lagrangian multiplier function. Another way is to use the old Jedi economist trick, which is to say that any time you want to uh, find an optimum point maximizing utility, then one condition of that maximizing uh, utility point has to be that the marginal rate of substitution of x for y has to be equal to the ratio of the prices, p of x over the price of y. This is just saying that the slope of an indifference curve here has to equal the slope of a budget line here. Now, uh, it, and so that's one equation, that's one condition. The other condition that has to be true in this case is the second equation. This is our constraint, so our constraint has to be true. That if we plug in the amount of x and y, it has to give us a certain amount of utility. So we basically end up with two equations, one and two, two equations in two unknowns. Now at the end of this video, I'll show you how to set this up in a Lagrange multiplier method and show you how we get exactly the same two equations out using the Lagrange multiplier method. So this is just a little quicker way, but I'll set up the Lagrange multiplier method at the end. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my trick for if you have a Cobb-Douglas utility function, the marginal rate of substitution, the, the quick trick there is that the marginal rate of substitution for a Cobb-Douglas is the exponent on the x times y, so it's going to be 0.3 times y, divided by the exponent on the y times x in the denominator, 0.7x. And I'll put a link to that video here if you don't know how that trick works. So that's equal to the ratio of the prices, price of x over the price of y. So that's our first equation. And what we want to do is solve this first equation either for y or x, and then plug it in to this utility function over here. So I'm going to solve this for y. To solve that for y, I'm just going to multiply both sides of this equation by 0.7x. And so that's going to give us 0.3y. Actually, but before we go any further, let me just get rid of these decimals here, right? Because all that's important is that it's in the ratio of, of 0.3 to 0.7. So, so we don't have to keep dealing with these decimal points, 0.3 and 0.7. What I'm going to do is just multiply the top and the bottom of this equation by 10 and change that to 3 and 7. 
Okay, so multiply the top and the bottom by 10, so we don't have to keep writing the 0 0.3 and the 0 0.7. All right, so now when we multiply both sides by 7x, we get 3y equals 7x times the price of x over the price of y. And then we just need to divide both sides by 3, and we're going to have that y equals 7 over 3 times x times the price of x over the price of y. Now, what we want to do is take this, which we know is equal to y, and plug it in for y into our second equation over here. So, when we plug that into 2, we're going to get that x to the point 3 times y, well all this is y, so 7 thirds x price of x over price of y, all raised to the point 7 is equal to the amount of utility that we want to get. And then we just want to simplify all this and, and get out what is x equal to, and that's going to give us our compensated demand for x. So in order to get the x out here, what we're going to want to do is distribute this 0.7 to everything inside the parentheses. Since everything is multiplied or divided by each other, we can separate this out. And so what we can do is we can pull that x out and it's x to the 0.7, and then leave everything else raised to the 0.7 power. So here's what that step will give us. We have x to the 0.3 times x to the 0.7, so that's that x that's in the parentheses raised to the 0.7, times, and then we have this term, 7 over 3, price of x over price of y, all to the 0.7, equals u bar. And in order to solve that for x, we just collect these two x terms, and x to the point 0.3 times x to the point 0.7 gives us x equals. And then we want to divide both sides by this term right here, the 7 thirds times the price of x over the price of y raised to the 0.7 power. So when we divide both sides by this fraction, we can think about it. Um, in order to divide by a fraction, you multiply by the inverse, right? So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by the inverse of this, and all that's going to do is flip these fractions upside down. We'll end up with u bar times and the inverse of this. It'll be 3 sevenths times the price of y over the price of x raised to the point 7 power. So once we have x, we just need to solve for y. And to solve for y, what we can do is plug in this x term into the utility function here for x, or we could plug this into the other equation, the marginal rate of substitution uh, equals the price of x over the price of y function, or another option would be to plug in this x, this u bar term times 3 sevenths py over px to the point 7, we could plug it into this equation, which is our simplified um, marginal rate of substitution equals the price of x over the price of y equation. And in this case, probably the easiest thing to do would be to plug this into here. We're going to get y equals 7 thirds times x, okay, well that whole thing is x u bar times 3 sevenths times the price of y over the price of x to the point 7 times the price of x over the price of y. 
And now we just have to carefully simplify what's going on here. So, in order to make this a little easier to simplify, let me distribute that 0.7 to each of these terms here in the middle um, individually and see what we get. So we're going to get y equals 7 thirds times, let me pull that 3 sevenths out, so that's times 3 over 7, and we can distribute that 0.7 this way. So 3 to the 0.7 over 7 to the point 0.7. That'll make it easy to see how to cancel some things here. And then let me pull out the price of y over the price of x in the same way. Price of x over the price of y. And here we have inside the brackets py over px to the point 0.7. So we have py to the point 0.7 over px to the point 0.7. And then we have this u bar the point 0.7 over here on the outside. Oh, sorry. No, that's not, that is not correct. I just, as we see, this, this U bar here is not raised to the point 0.7, so um, we just write the U bar down. So, now we just uh, try to cancel some of these powers out here a little bit. So let me move down a little bit more. So we've got 7 to the first divided by 7 to the point 7. We subtract those exponents, 1 minus point 7, and that leaves us with 7 to the point 3 power. Here we have 3 to the point 7 power divided by 3 to the first power, subtract those exponents, and you're going to get a 3 to the minus 0.3 power, which is the same as 3 to the 0.3 power in the denominator. Okay? Now we can do a similar kind of operation with the prices of x and the price of y here. We're going to end up with the price of x to the 0.3 in the numerator, and the price of y to the 0.3 in the denominator. Of course, there are other ways that you could simplify this. And then all we're left with is the u bar there on the end. And now we can kind of simplify this to make this look a little bit more like the answer that I had on the handout, where we have y star or yc for the compensated demand for y, and we should also have a uh, compensated demand here to make sure we know it's not a Marshallian demand, is we just have u bar times 7 thirds price of x, price of y, all raised to the 0.3 power. And that's how you derive the Hicksian demands given a utility function and um, just a generic budget function. Now, for people who are wondering, just because I know some people might, might be interested in this, um, what if we didn't want to, or what if we were taking a class, or what if we couldn't um, use this kind of simple trick where we use the marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices, slope of the budget line equals the slope of the indifference curve, uh, and the utility function. What if we wanted to use a Lagrangian multiplier method to get these two equations? That's all the Lagrangian multiplier method is really going to get you. Anyway, we have price of x times x plus the price of y times y. And we want to minimize that such that x to the point 3 times y to the point 7 equals u bar. That's our constraint. What we do is we add in the constraint multiplied by a Lagrangian multiplier. And you could do that to look something like this. Plus the price of y times y plus lambda times u bar minus x to the point 3 y to the point 7. So that's the way you would set up that Lagrangian. 
And then we would need to take three partial derivatives here in order to get three equations. Our first partial derivative, so let's just call this function L for the Lagrangian. Um, take the derivative of that Lagrangian with respect to x. We'll take the partial derivative of that Lagrangian with respect to y. And we'd need to take the partial derivative of that Lagrangian with respect to lambda, the Lagrangian multiplier there. And what we'll end up with is, let's just go through and do this real quickly. Um, sorry for the bad handwriting here. Here we're going to get price of x. And we take the derivative with respect to x. There's no x here, so we skip it. Plus lambda. Well, actually, all right, so it's going to be plus lambda times a negative, right? So plus lambda times a negative 0.3x to the minus 0.7y to the 0.7, since that's the x term there. And then here, when we take the derivative with respect to y, we're going to get something that looks very similar, price of y plus lambda times, and we take the derivative of this term with respect to y, we'll get the negative um, x to the point 0.3 times 0.7 times y to the minus 0.3. And then the derivative with respect to the constraint just gives you the budget constraint itself. u minus x to the point 0.3, y to the point 0.7. And since we're trying to find a minimum or a maximum, in this case it's a minimum, what we'll do is we set each of these equal to 0. And by setting this constraint equal to zero, that's exactly the same equation as u equals x to the point three times y to the point seven. That's our second equation that we used up top. We can use these first two equations, and one way to do this would be to divide one equation by the other. And by dividing this top equation by the bottom equation, um, what we can do is get that same equation that we had before. You see, if we just divide here, we're going to get the price of x over the price of y, right? Now, technically, if we shouldn't divide 0 by 0 on this side. So technically, what we should do is we should move one of these terms over to the other side. So let's do this. Let's do this properly. I don't want anybody to, to think that I'm doing improper math here. So let's, let's just move this negative term over to the other side. So that'll make it positive, and by rearranging, we'll get something that looks like this, okay? And by dividing the top by the bottom, we get the price of x over the price of y. That's the slope of the budget line. And when we do the ratio of these two terms, we're going to get exactly the same thing we got before, the marginal rate of substitution. Note how these lambdas are going to cancel with each other. And if you simplify these terms, you're going to get that same expression we had up above for the marginal rate of substitution. And then you just carry on as we did before. So this is just justifying that, that little trick that we started with, uh, showing you how you can get it using the Lagrange multiplier method. So hopefully that'll show you how it's, how it's done, how you can take a utility function and a budget constraint and minimize it and get these Hicksian compensated demands just as we did up here and we get the same results as we got on my consumer theory handout. So thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact me and I'll help you if I can. Otherwise, good luck with your economic studies and I'll see you next time.